Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India for lateral directional case. It is again the approach is same. Here you have to use the stability equation that was S u 1. Let me write this y beta into beta of S minus S y p plus g cos theta 1 into phi of s plus s u 1 minus y r to psi of s this is equal to 0 and then minus l beta into beta of s plus s square minus l p s into phi of s minus s square a 1 plus s l r psi of s equal to 0. Similarly, minus n beta into beta of s minus s square b 1 plus n p s phi of s plus s square minus s n r into psi of s equal to 0. So, these are free response. Remember the stability matrix, this into beta, this into phi, this into psi like that it is going. When you say phi, please remember phi dot equal to p has been modeled. So, s of phi of s is p of s. So, wherever p of s is there, you can replace by s phi of s. That is why you could see y p into p for that p, the s phi of s has come, right. Now, once I do this, I, I do it for a free response, then I can write again, since I am looking for phi of s, my beta of s, and psi of s by beta of s, you know what I have to do, I have to divide by beta of s and then I get equation of the form minus s y p plus g cos theta 1 into phi of s by beta of s. It must be very boring, it is indeed boring because it is too simple. We have to take a pen and pencil and follow the instruction. Of course, nowadays you are all high tech people, you go to the MATLAB and do it. There is a danger using MATLAB, you may lose the insight because the MATLAB the moment it understands you have not understood the dynamics, it will fool you. Please be cautious. Similarly, I have S square minus L P S phi of S by beta of s minus s square a 1 plus s l r into psi of s by beta of s equal to l beta. This little arrangement and then minus s square b 1 plus n p s phi of s by beta of s plus s square minus s n r psi of s beta of s equal to n beta. So, what is our aim? Our aim is to find this ratios in frequency domain. These are three algebraic equations, right. So, easily you can find out the expression for phi of s by beta of s or psi of s by beta of s and if we do a little bit of 
uh, handling algebraic equations, simultaneous equations, you know, by method of substitution, method of subtraction, the grammar rule, whatever it is, you can find out phi of s by beta of s as a1s plus b1 by s a square plus b of s plus c and psi of s by beta of s equal to a 2 s plus b 2 by s a square plus b s plus c, where for completion I am writing a is equal to 1 minus a 1 b 1. So remember a 1 b 1 are nothing but ratio of moment of inertia which we defined earlier b equal to minus n r minus l p minus b 1 l r minus n p a 1 c equal to l p n r minus l r n p. Similarly, a 1 equal to l beta plus a 1 n beta b 1 equal to n beta l r minus l beta n r and then a 2 equal to n beta plus b 1 l beta and b 2 equal to l beta n p minus l p n beta like this. Okay? What is the message? Message is very simple that if I want to find out more shape phi of s by beta of s that is I want to see relative magnitude between phi and beta that is phi is this and whether it is developing beta or not on that mode if at all what is the magnitude relative magnitude and what is the phase difference. So what I need to do I need to put the value of s a b all these constants are known by the uh, once I know those dimension, dimensional derivatives and moment of inertia etc etc. Now, the question is for lateral directional case, case see you have again the equation of the form a s 4 plus b s q plus c s square plus d s plus e equal to 0. So, for lateral directional case you have lambda 1 some value, lambda 2 some value, lambda 3 4 some complex conjugate. Okay. So, this is Dutch rule. So, if you want to know about phi of s by, and by beta of s, if you are looking for a spiral, put the value of s here from the spiral root whatever you have got. Similarly, for here, so you will know the ratios. If you want for Dutch rule, put that value s here and get these ratios. Once you know the ratios in as a part of complex number, you now know how to find the magnitude and the phase difference. Right, that is as simple as that, not a big deal. Let us say for a particular airplane, the value of A, which has come, let us say around 1, B is 0 0.541, then C is 0 0.0452, then A1 is minus 4.1, B1 is minus 0 0.027. A2 is 2.59 and B2 is 1.130. Let us say how these have been computed. You know the expression of A, B, C, and for the airplane, you know what is A1, B1, you know what is LP, LR. For a given airplane, let us say example airplane, once I put these values, I get A, B, C, A1, B1, A2, B2. These are the value for an example airplane. For an example, airplane or aircraft and we are talking about lateral directional case that is important right because this values of an expression of a1 b1 a2 b2 etc all whatever I have computed here pertaining to 
lateral directional case, the expressions are like this. Correct. Once we do that, let us say we try to find mode shape for spiral mode. That is our next mechanical challenge. We are trying to find out mode shape for spiral mode for the example airplane. And if you recall, for the spiral mode, uh, it was a real root. So, s was a real number, the complex part was 0, and the value was minus point zero zero one zero one. Okay. So, if I want to find out phi of s by beta of s, I have to put here phi of s by beta of s. Of course, you are talking in terms of ratio of the complex number. So, I will put value of a 1. So, a 1, where is a 1 is minus roughly 4.1 into s. So, that is point minus point 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, right, plus b 1. b 1 is how much? b 1 is minus point 2073 minus point 0, 0273 divided by again s that is minus point zero zero one zero one s then again a square so you can put a value is how much what is a value what is a a, a is one so s square this is minus point zero zero one zero one square right plus b of s b value is how much b you could see here point five four one point five four one into s is again point zero zero one zero one right then plus c plus c c is how much check here what is the value of c point zero four five two one zero four five two and this if you do that I may commit some mistake in putting the values don't blame me simple thing a one b one all these values you know s you know for spiral mode or spiral mode, which we have got from the exact equation of the same airplane is minus 0 0.00101. You have to simply put those values here, and let us say this comes to ratio of minus 0 0.0231 by minus 0 0.00451 ratio. Okay. I draw the magnitude, I get 512. For psi of A and beta of A, similar thing if I do. I get numerator 1.127, denominator is this, and this is 24989. What are the interpretation you are having from this? That is I am asking. That is the beauty of the mode shape. First of all, you see phi of s and beta of s, the numerator, denominator, they are all the same sign. Phi is tan, arc tan, if you find. There are no imaginary parts, so the phase difference is 0. However, you could understand that magnitude of beta is very, very small. That means phi is more dominating for lateral, sorry, phi is more dominating for spiral mode. You could see bank and start side slipping, this further bank, so this goes. So, this clearly tells you for a spiral mode, I am more bothered about the bank angle, right, and that is the information I get from this looking at this numerator denominator two things I understand if they are in phase so when your phi is changing same time beta is also in the same direction changing however the contribution of beta is very very small compared to phi so for a controller you see how what a wonderful information for him he knows now what aircraft control to be used or, or which one has to be corrected first right there are many such decisions one has to take. If you see psi of s and beta of s, again you see numerator here, denominator here. The magnitude is 24,989, this ratio. That means, really, in terms of psi, beta is again very, very small in comparison. But one thing you remember the psi and beta, because it is minus sign here, so they are phase of 180 degree, right? 180 degree phase difference. So, where it was, they were in phase and psi and beta, beta phase are out of phase. And you know that psi is this, then beta becomes negative, you know. Psi equal to minus beta, if I am not talking about, uh, talking about a coordinated turn type, 
so which is also uh, giving you a correct information and what interestingly important for you is that beta participation is very very negligible in this spiral dynamics so you can design a controller and give it priority and which variable you have to give priority this will help right so we have given example of spiral mode now we talk about roll mode what do you have to do same equations here s should correspond to roll mode right from that exact equation and you know the roots already I have given you and if I write phi of s by beta of s I use that expression put the values now I, I should put s corresponding to roll mode and if you see that example if I recall the value was 0 0.5507 uh, right that was the value of s or the root if I put those values in those expression then I get phi of s and this as 2.075 by 0 0.0141 this is equal to 147 roughly approximately and here psi of s by beta of s I get as minus 0 0.183 by 0 0.0141 the magnitude will be 12.98 very simple I have to just put roll mode s value in this expression nothing more a1 a2 all are we are knowing so again here you could see that phi of s phi and beta are in phase okay and again beta is less compared to beta domination is less compared to phi which is roll mode right highly damped and for psi and beta for psi and beta you find they are in out of phase the phase angle is 180 degree because of this minus sign here right so that is as a designer what should I Inferred is the roll mode is predominantly dictated by the roll mode is predominantly dictated by dictated by phi and that we know okay now we will try to get more shape for our understanding for Dutch roll case and let us see what happens when you are trying to find out for Dutch roll mode phi of s by beta of s my job is very mechanical I know this is the expression I know a1 b1 all those values what I have to do see from the exact equation what was the value for s and one of the root for complex conjugate is this so this I substitute in those equation and phi of s by beta of s I get in this form 0 0.213 ratio of two complex number into 6.70 divided by minus 0 0.961 minus j 4.240 this is the phi of s by beta of s in terms of ratio of two complex number and now you know how to find magnitude so phi of s by beta of s so magnitude is concerned that will be equal to under root of you know by now the expression it will be 44.89 by 0.92 plus 17.98 and which is equal to under root of this which will be equal to 1.54 that you know now no home again square numerator square denominator square already you have given that expression is the magnitude similarly if you try to find out psi of s by beta of s you will find this ratio will come as uh, minus 0 0.980 plus j 4.19 divided by 
minus 0 0.961 minus j 4.240. Four zero, roughly this, and you can easily find out the magnitude. This magnitude will come as the magnitude of magnitude of psi of s by beta of s. You know how to find out. This will come as around zero point nine nine. Note down this. One is one point five four. One is point nine nine. But one thing you should understand when I try to find their phase difference between phi and beta and psi and beta. Now, also we are ready with the formula. We have already written this earlier. So, if you find out the phase phi of s by beta of s, this will be arc tan minus 6.70. I am just writing it so that you can follow it. In fact, you should not see even this, you should be able to find out yourself arc tan minus 4.24 divided by 0 0.960. So, this will give you roughly minus 165.4 degree. Similar exercise if we do for psi of s by beta of s, you will get this to be around minus 154.07 degree. Okay. But then, how do I interpret this? Which, should, which one should I get give, which one should I give more importance? As long as we understand the phase difference between phi and beta for a Dutch rule, that means when phi is becoming positive, beta is not becoming positive at the same time. That is very important. There is a phase difference of 165.4 degree. Similarly, stories with psi and beta, right? That is why I was telling it is not this, it is this and this. If it was 180 degree, then when this man was doing like this, airplane should have gone like this. Then they are out of phase. One is going like this positive, another is going like this. Swaying motion in this direction, yawing motion in this direction. That is 180 degree phase psi and beta. But it is not happening. Again, we come back to this psi, phi of s and beta of s. You could see phase difference is 165 degree, and between psi and beta is 154. So you know relatively how psi and beta are functioning in terms of their phase differences. They are definitely not in phase, they are out of phase, right? Almost almost 180 degree out of phase, opposite. Right. This is one and second thing you understand that for me, this is important phi and beta, this, this transfer function or this mode shape typically for handling quality requirements. From handling quality requirement, we try to have this ratio as low as possible to validate or to justify or to get a scale for acceptance for Dutch roll excitation. That is extremely important. If the airplane is banking and side slip, this, this ratio is very, very high, then you can understand Dutch roll oscillation acceptance will not be approved it should be as low as possible. Right? So, this in a nutshell you could see very simplistic approach. Right? We could get so many information out of this mode shapes. You can do a lot as long as you work in a linear system using transfer function approach. But I must also caution you today with highly maneuverable, airplane, maneuverable airplane and using time uh, domain is working in time domain in state space modeling nonlinear aerodynamics this may not look very relevant apparently but let me tell you before you design anything big you need to understand this that gives you solid foundation and bigger things are just addition to this basic foundation is here you need to 
solidify your understanding here before you make the next jump. Do not go for a fashion, non-linear aerodynamics, non-linear controller. First you understand this, get the right fragrance and smell of this approach, understand enjoy the sweat of this in, uh, required to put in this approach, then you will find you will get the real fragrance and you will be ready for a controller designer. I am sure you will do nice, nowadays our startup companies are doing excellent in designing controls and all and very good sign, very good contribution coming from youth, I am sure you will be able to add value to that further.